know more than anyone else probably in your life what that shit feels like and it is not fun and nobody gets it unless you go through it hi guys so it's been a while since I've posted on this channel like consistently an actual an actual long form uh, video um, I wanted to do today's video as a follow-up to my 23andMe video that I posted a while ago it's coming up to like the actual two-year anniversary of when all of this stuff started happening and you know since since then um, a lot has changed and if you haven't noticed I've been like away from YouTube I took a pretty long sabbatical it's been about a year since I've actually posted anything long form and there's a couple reasons for that so this video is half like update to that update to what's going on um, but specifically geared towards the 23 and me video that I, I put out and that video got such a huge response from so many people that have had similar stories or are going through similar challenges like with their families or whatever and um, I couldn't really get back to everyone or respond to everyone but I just want to firstly thank everyone for sharing um, their stories because I know it's really really difficult sometimes to you know dredge that up and share that on a public forum um, trust me I've, I've done it um, but anyway so as an update to that whole story things are pretty much well let me back up i'm gonna break it down into like three segments of like relationships and i'll talk about each respective set so firstly like the relationship with my biological dad and his family um is pretty cool like uh we're we're, we're good i've i haven't gone back to visit my biological father in barbados and i haven't really seen the family but we do stay in contact he texts me all the time we talk to each other uh, you know via whatsapp uh, quite often um maybe not as often as like the regular father-daughter relationship but we do talk to each other and he checks up on me which is lovely because you know i'm like older right so he does make an effort and it's been really great i still keep in contact with my cousins we have each other on social media we even have like a whatsapp group with like the siblings and we're able to touch base with each other once in a while and see where we are like with our families and stuff which has been really nice but um you know the challenge for me is you know i i didn't have the benefit of growing up with with this family so you know it's it's i don't want to say it's difficult but sometimes it can be a little bit awkward trying to like forge a bond with um someone that you really don't know but i think we're all just trying our very very best so that has been sort of like the best case scenario in terms of like where I am with my father and I've come to kind of like peace with where we are and um, you know I'm 40 now he's in his late 60s um, so there's a lot of time to be made up for but you know unfortunately time is not our our ally in this right so um, but as an offshoot to that the man <laughs> just call him a man but the the person that I was told was my father after I sent him you know that message basically telling him everything that happened and letting him know that he wasn't indeed my father um, I haven't heard from him since and I mean I guess that's fair I don't really think he wanted to necessarily be my father I don't think he ever really cared to I don't know what words I'm looking for but I don't really think it bothered him that much when he found out that I really wasn't his daughter to begin with um even though we did have a relationship it wasn't the best one but we did have one later in life um because again you know my my mother kind of blocked a lot of that from happening when it was supposed to happen but you know that was pretty hurtful because I had already kind of like tied myself to him um, in my mind for so many years basically my whole life that was my father so it was pretty shitty when he wasn't even like empathetic to what had happened um, and I didn't come at him like in a in a petty way or like in a dramatic way I was just sort of like hey well I did this DNA test and this is what I found out and this is all the information I have and just out of respect and as a courtesy and all of these things you're this 
party you're this other person in this entire scenario um i think i owe it to you to tell you what the truth is and you know we could take it from there but i i i don't know how he processed that I, again i haven't spoken to, to him since and that's kind of been a little bit um hurtful but it is what it is i have to respect his decisions and how he chooses to handle that and um it's cool like i will i will be fine right now in terms of like what happened on my biological mom's side like that all went to shit i still haven't spoken to her we our relationship is really just at 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 not even ground zero it's like we're under the ground honey like we are low we have worked it's just at just a nothing um and that is the thing that i have struggled with a lot so when i found everything out obviously i was really you could tell from that video like i was not processing this um my grandmother had just died and my grandmother was really the mother figure in my life you know she was my my everything i loved her so much and we were very close you know after losing her and then a couple weeks later like this whole big thing just blows up about um the 23 and me and my dna and my father and my background and my my ethnic makeup all of this stuff um i don't know if in like in retrospect i thought i was managing it the best that i could and i guess i was i mean if you think about it but it really wasn't um i really wasn't doing shit i literally was was losing my mind and um i went into a very very dark place i literally would lock myself up in a room like my business has suffered my relationships suffered i closed my smoke shop i sold everything that was in it um I really stopped taking on uh, law firm clients like legal clients I stopped I just I didn't have the capacity to take on anyone else's like problems and I'm, I'm not saying that what I do as a lawyer for my clients or for any of you like is a problem it's just that at the time it was just so much for me emotionally I didn't I wasn't standing on like solid footing I wasn't able to stand on solid ground I was just emotionally all over the place because I just felt like wow you know my own blood would betray me to this level um like who can I trust and I can't believe anything that comes out of anyone's mouth and I don't really think that certain people have my best interests at heart I think a lot of what was going on was trying to preserve reputation trying to present a certain image to a community and the only person that ended up paying the price for that was me right so I had a lot of issues <laughs> with that and i went into a very intensive therapy i mean i was on antidepressants i was in a deep 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 depression i would just like lock myself up in my room i wouldn't leave for days i didn't want to see anyone talk to anyone and like i still posted on social media like my instagram and stuff um but there was never anything consistent and people outside of like my circle really didn't know what was going on per se and i think i i was putting up a front but inside i was literally falling apart and it affected you know my my relationships with my partner my relationship with my son um my working relationships i just wasn't there i was not there like i was in a very 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 dark place and i'm not kidding like i didn't want to be here like like you understand what i'm saying like i just i didn't see the point of carrying on because i was just so hurt and it's like ah uh, i don't want to cry about this and i'm not i'm not crying because i'm sad right now i'm just crying because i'm thinking of like where my headspace was at at the time and <clears throat> it was very very difficult at the time and I don't ever want to be in that place again right so after months and months and months of this and like I said I was on antidepressants I was trying to dig myself out of this hole and it's like nobody else could do that work right I had to do that work for myself and I had to work with professionals 
um you know i'm talking like ptsd level what was really crazy is like during that intensive therapy like we were dredging up things that i had you know blacked out buried i'm talking like traumas abuse sexual abuse um you know mental illness that runs through you know my family and things like that uncovering all these things about myself um that i just i wasn't prepared for and a lot of this discovery and revelation stemmed from everything that happened with the 23 and me and it's no one's fault I, it, it's not a blame it's not a whatever it's just that the 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 journey that i had to travel in the last two years has not been fucking easy and i just had to take a step back right from everything so when it comes to the batch of the, the relationship with my mother um it's really non-existent and it's really really sad because i think there were a lot of negligent decisions made on i don't know how to say this without like bashing anyone or throwing anybody under the bus but i just feel like how things were handled me as a mother like i wouldn't handle a situation like this the way that it was handled right and but what i've learned through therapy and just like in my own self-reflection not everyone is me and not everyone is going to handle um the situation or a situation like this in the same way a lot of the way that this was handled was stemming from shame embarrassment um which i don't understand but it is what it is and unfortunately my mother probably still feels a level of shame and embarrassment or whatever but i just feel like it could have been handled a lot better and part of what i grapple with too is you know i understand for like smaller things um and especially in the west indian community for little things little spats with your family especially your parents you can kind of bite the bullet i am the mother you are the child or i'm the parent you are the child and the child goes to the parent and kind of soften things up and says sorry or apologize just to kind of keep things for it because obviously you respect your parents you want to um give deference to them you obviously are the child you do owe them a certain level of of respect and a certain level of authority but in this particular instance i didn't feel like it was necessary for me to reach back out to my mother to to say anything <laughs> it was just kind of like okay you made these decisions and you chose to do this and now this is the fallout um do you not care that i am hurting like hurting to my core to my soul to a visceral level to the cells of my body as a mother myself i can never look at my child and see them in that much distress and just say hey i said what i said and i did what i did and it is what it is so that's kind of where we are um i don't think we're ever really going to be able to bounce back from that i mean anything can happen but there's a lot of healing that would need to be done um on that side of things in order to move past some of the the hurt well not some of it all of it and it's not and it's not that i'm holding a grudge it's um i'm just i'm befuddled still in a lot of a lot of ways still very like what the fuck like how could what 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 was the, why was the lie necessary why were all of these lies for literally almost four decades for because i turned 40s and we're coming up to the second anniversary of when i got the results of the test and then again you know i didn't see my my biological father after i discovered him until a year plus later right but um and it feels like it's been a long time but it really hasn't this is still pretty fresh and she has not been in my life since then and i don't think she has any interest in being in my life in the future and and it's unfortunate but i have to move past it so to 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 address the whole thing with my mom's side of the family um even the extended family my aunts um my uncles and stuff it's it's been a very weird and awkward uh, dynamic between all of us um i think they either don't 
want to seem like they're taking sides but there are no sides to fucking take in this and this is something that like with the caribbean community i really don't understand it's like oh yeah well the stuff like this is commonplace in the west indian community like i can understand you know our grandparents our great great grandparents and and people back in the day when all kind of weird stuff was going on and people were adopting kids and people had multiple husbands and people weren't legally married there was a lot of shit going on in the caribbean i get that so it was kind of difficult to like trace who was whose daddy and what auntie and uncle and people were adopting kids and all people were finding kids like all kinds of stuff was happening right and there wasn't a clear explanation but we're talking about freaking 2022 2023 2024 we're talking about modern age where there's technology where we're able to take dna tests we're able to uncover and discover things about ourselves and it's a beautiful thing we have access to so much information um and resources now that we did it so i don't this excuse of oh well this is the caribbean way is bullshit to me because why are we still perpetuating the same traumas over and over generation to generation like it has to stop like we as a community we as a culture we need to take accountability for for the things that we do right and stop blaming it on cultural norms like i hate that like oh yeah this was the West Indian people, they do that shit all the time. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it because we are way better and way smarter than that now. And people need to stop, okay? Because it affects other people's lives in such a major way. Could you imagine if all of this that happened really made me just not be on this earth anymore, right? Could you imagine the impact that would have on my son, on my husband? on the people that actually do love me it would have a major impact all because people cannot take accountability and and try to heal and gather around someone that they've hurt exponentially and that is very sad i would never want to be responsible for something like that so but that's just me anyway when it comes to you know we talked about you know my my relationship with my biological father my relationship with my biological mother um now like when it comes to the relationship with myself i am still learning myself again i don't care if i'm half black i don't care if i'm half white i don't care if i'm fucking red purple brown polka dot that's not what's important to me what's important to me is that i have a sense of identity i know where i come from i have ties and, and roots into a bigger system and a bigger um, family. It's very important to me. I want to know what kind of stock I come from. Um, and I thought I had all of that. And then, you know, also not being so hard on myself about this this perfectionism shit because it's something that I, I dealt with my whole life. It's like trying to get validation um, from everyone like especially my family uh, you know I have to be the best I have to get the best degree I have to have the most successful profession I have to this I have to that everything by the book I did it so I can make my family proud and to stand here 40 years later and be ostracized and made a black sheep because of things that someone else did or other people did when I was a child not even born is insanity so I'm still trying to work through um, not taking on the responsibility of other people's mistakes and then also not wanting them to handle things the way that I would handle things so I have to like and that's a challenge I have to stop comparing myself to other people and holding them to the level and the standard that I would hold myself to right and then for me it's like I was chasing all of these entrepreneurial endeavors I wanted to own this I wanted to own that I had this business I had that little business a virtual business a passive business an active business so like all of these things and I for what <laughs> for fucking what I literally needed to stop everything and just focus on myself and my home my house my little unit 
and my little sphere of influence and that's all I could do and I have been much happier that way um my circle is definitely way smaller than it used to be I'm not as out and about as much as I used to be um, I don't use the term friend or the terms friend or family as loosely as I used to anymore because it really does have a lot of value and I don't want to use the magic of my tongue to call anyone friend or family that I don't think is worthy of that title um, because I cannot I cannot manage I don't have the bandwidth to deal with any more letdowns from people that are close to me in my life so right now I'm struggling with trust um, I'm still working through this concept of my identity and like who I am learning about that side of my family and then also learning about how to deal with conflict in my life and upset in my life and how to pivot so I mean I, this might sound very negative but um, in general but this is this is my truth like I am not perfect and like we can all get on this freaking platform and get on whatever social media platform and act like we're perfect we have the most aesthetic everything everyone's a freaking millionaire perfect lives perfect film it's not true I say all that to say too that this channel is gonna change and I may lose a lot of you it's it's okay um, it's fine uh, because I think I have more to offer than just you know legal videos I have a whole different perspective on life now I'm older like I said I'm 40 I'll be 41 in a couple of months and the shit that I've learned in these last few years like I mean you couldn't I don't know I know this was kind of like a rambly video but I just wanted to put it out because so many people were responsive to the original video and my freaking heart broke for every single one of you that left a comment that reached out because I know more than anyone else probably in your life what that shit feels like and it is not fun and nobody gets it unless you go through it people try to downplay it and it's like oh it is what it is like you're an adult now and blah 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 blah, blah. you don't get it until something like this happens to you or somebody super close to you you have no idea how you would handle it so please if you're watching this and you know someone who's going through this have some empathy and give them some fucking grace because it's hard okay your entire world blows up and people don't get it and when you you yeah, it's listen you heard the whole freaking video it's a lot right even even the first video it's a lot so but anyway if you know you've seen if you're seeing this as a follow-up to the original video and you commented please know that I get it um thank you so much for sharing your story and hopefully whatever I share can help support you through what you're going through because I haven't when I was looking and searching for a community to connect with about this um, I couldn't really find anybody that I aligned with to share um, and kind of like su get support and support them and whatever to the extent that I could but yeah um, guys you know I I'm gonna stop talking now but I hope you're all doing well um, I hope that you are giving yourself some grace I hope that you're working through whatever trauma you're experiencing as a result of your um, story and you know if you feel like you want to comment you feel like you want to DM me you feel like you want to send me a voice note feel free to do so um, if I can get back to you I will but I promise I'm gonna try to respond to each and every one of you just because yeah like we have to we have to lift each other up in, in times like this but yeah guys like I'm good I hope you are too um, and thank you so much for all of your support and thoughts and everything that you've poured out um, towards me and, and this situation all right I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.